Hello again, and welcome to Connect and Convert, Insider Strategies for Small Business Sales Success, where our belief is it's not about what you learn, it's about what you do. Hey, I'm Dennis Collins, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Leah Bumphrey. Hi, Leah. Hello, hello. And somewhere Welcome in back. the ether, Paul is there looking out Producer for us. Producer Paul. Just, I can thank, just tell. I can just tell. Thank, thank God. I don't know <laughs> if we could do this on our own. In fact, no, I do know. We uh, couldn't. <laughs> no, we, you and I would be having a nice cup of coffee. If we were in Canada, we'd be at Tim Hortons. I don't know where we'd be in the States. Would it be Starbucks? We'd be just of having course. a chat. You don't have Starbucks up in Canada? We do, but it doesn't have the same legendary appeal as a Tim Hortons. Uh, when you come Hortons, see me up here and help me shovel snow, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah. Uh, don't hold your breath on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see you, but how about July 15th, okay? All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Speaking with confidence, Leah, speaking with confidence, what does science have to tell us about being heard, understood, and influential? I... I don't know. I was never a very confident speaker growing up. You know, I, I ended up being a radio DJ and a host and all that behind the mic. But I, were, yep. were, you a comp, were you a confident speaker? I mean, I bet you were. I bet you stood I, up at age seven and did speeches. I did. And I, I lo always loved uh, public speaking. To me, it was just a whole connection with a whole bunch of people all at once. And oh, I, yeah. I, I just was thrilled with it. What I do know is anyone can learn to be a confident speaker. That doesn't mean you're going to learn to love to public speak. There's there's a difference. Right. And for most yes. of us in our in our public and our in our our business lives, you have to learn to be confident because what is sales but being able Absolutely. to transfer confidence? Now I'm not talking not about just, being fake, yeah. and I'm not talking about you right. know you know being very you know having to have this bold effervescent personality. It's confidence can be quiet. And it doesn't mean you're going to it love can. it, but you can learn how to do it. Yes, you can. So what if I told you that anyone can learn to speak with more confidence? People are more likely to listen to you. Do you want people to listen to you if you're in sales, if you're a manager, a leader? Hey, if you're a spouse, a husband, a wife, do you want your kids to listen to you? Well, guess what? There are ways that you can become more persuasive. It can be learned. You want to be more certain, more confident, more self-assured, more knowledgeable? Well, the scientists again. You know, I always turn to science. Leah That's... is of Leah is of the heart. I am. And I am of the science. So we blend. We blend. It's a good combination. Have, I think it is. But scientists have now researched this. They've researched everything at one time or another. And they have now defined the most powerful words. And they have defined the fact this skill can be learned by choosing your words carefully. You can increase your verbal power. Do I need to say why this is important in sales? That is how we make a living in sales, with words. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let me say, first of all, that all of the science that we're going to discuss in this episode is based on research conducted by one of my favorite professors, Dr. Jonah Berger, professor at the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania. He is a prolific author, a well-known and sought-after speaker, and a business consultant. So this stuff is, the science part of this is coming from Jonah Berger, okay? So Leah, have you ever tried listening to someone who kind of hedges well, kind of, maybe, somewhat, usually, generally. Have you ever heard somebody talk like that? Maybe oh. something, maybe, around, uh, maybe, uh, some kind of. Absolutely. And you know what? You know right away what else is going on there. Yeah. Well, what, what hedging, else? yeah, hedging, well, the problem is people deduct that there's nothing going on there. It lessens the impact. It suggests that you're uncertain, that your ideas aren't worth considering. So the first hint that I want to give today is if you find yourself using those hedge words, forget them. Use definite words. Definitely, clearly, obviously, it's totally clear. That projects confidence. That makes it more easy and more likely that people will listen to you and follow you. What about this? This is one that's debated over and over again, and I'd love your opinion on this one. 
science has something to say about this, but I'd like to hear what Leah thinks about this. How about occasionally admitting I screwed up? Oh, I can't. I messed up. It's on me. It's my fault. How about that? How does that help? Doesn't that hinder communication? Doesn't that make you look bad? It it becomes real. Now, that's if you really did screw up. Not not if you're <laughs> you're making an affectation so that you seem more right. real. People, well, let's say you really that. screwed up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, th- th- it, when you are willing to do that, it actually makes the connection stronger. And think about in personal life that that's very true. So much so, uh, so much more in business because in business you don't have a lot of times any kind of a relationship with someone. If you can come right. forward, and I, I we've all been in those situations, human error, something goes wrong, a mistake is made, the wrong part is ordered. This this happened, and I am so sorry, and that's not how I wanted to do it, but I'm going to make it better. It gives you the opportunity to forge a relationship. If you're not willing to do that, mm-hmm. it's it's not a real conversation. Well, yes, and science, here I go again, science has something to say about that. Absolutely, what you said is correct. Occasionally admitting a mistake negates the fact that you're nearly perfect, right? It makes you more human. But here is the twist. There's a twist to this. It only works if you're already perceived to be competent. You see what I'm saying? If you are perceived to be a loser, incompetent, okay, not capable, Mm -hmm. admitting a mistake only builds the case against you. But if you are viewed as a person who is generally dependable and competent, occasionally admitting a mistake makes you approachable. It makes you more vulnerable, okay? But again, with that caveat. And I would add to that, Dennis. If you're working with someone else who made the mistake and you're the one having to tell the client about it, telling them that it was Dennis that made the mistake is the worst thing you can do. (laughs) I'm saying, you know what, Paul, that was not my fault. It was Dennis that did it. Don't I, I'm sorry. I worked with Dennis. I'm trying. He keeps on and on and this happened, but I'm going to fix it. I look awful. I end up looking, especially if there's no relationship there. I look like someone passing the buck. I'm kicking Dennis when he's down. I'm not willing to work as a team. So there, there's some intricacies to being to the honesty, even if Dennis, even if you did mess up, I'm not going to say it was you. <laughs> that, well, there's one exception to that. Anything that gets screwed up on this podcast is Boomer's fault, okay? so You and I know it. No. Yeah, But don't tell him I said that I agree. No. But, you know, what <laughs> What you're talking about is the finger pointing. You yes. Know, finger pointing. You, you, you. That never works. Never works. That is... No. The worst thing you can do. It's always me and I. I'm uncomfortable when you say that. I'm uncomfortable when you're late for the meeting. You make me uncomfortable, not you. I am uncomfortable when you don't abide by what we agreed to, our agreements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, how about emotional words? That's a no-brainer. We know you don't need the science to know that emotional words and concepts, they grab attention. Okay? Yep. But here is another twist. Maybe you already knew this, Leah, because you're a, a wonderful writer. Emotion. There are certain types of emotional words that get more attention than others. Did you know that? Well, I'm not surprised, but tell me more. Okay. How about emotional words that denote uncertainty work better, according to the scientists? Words like unsettled, anxious doubtful, unsure, okay? Positive emotional words are good, but uncertain emotional words are better. Isn't that interesting? And you know, that makes sense to me because when we feel uncertain, we're actually bearing our soul a little bit more. We're actually sharing something a little bit deeper, at least yeah. when, when in, in this kind of an instance. So it would grab attention. People are not expecting that. We've all walked into 
a store and it's a com obvious commission salesperson and everything looks absolutely fantastic on you and it's gorgeous <laughs> oh it's it's perfect it was it fits you like a glove it looks fantastic and <laughs> real women hate that as much as real men do but yet there are still those unreal type of salespeople that do that now i'm much more uh, likely to buy the really fancy hat, oh, not the fancy hat, but the the the, the jacket from the salesperson ah. that looks at one on me and go, you know what, I I'm not sure about that one on you. There, let's try this. Ah, yeah. Because all of a sudden, she's sharing something with me that's maybe not that comfortable. Say, Leah, that looks doubtful on you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been those times. Or let me tell you. Or Leah, I'm anxious when I see you wearing that. <laughs> and again, you, you I'm, we're kidding, but you get of course, the, the of gym. course. Now here, here's something that I need your help on. You are, if, if anyone has read anything that Leah Bumphrey has written, you are lucky. You are fortunate because she is a magnificent, r inspiring writer. Uh, if you if you go to Wizard of Ads Partners, uh, our webpage, you will see her work featured on there under her real name, Leah Bumphrey. But she's a great storyteller. And so I'm going to pose a question to you. What story trajectory? Yeah, I yeah, you can do it. <laughs> there you go. Is the most persuasive. What does science tell us? OK, there are three choices. Straight line, no ups or downs, just straight to the point. Mm -hmm. Second, negative up to a positive and then down to a negative. So negative to positive, positive to negative. Third choice, a roller coaster ride. Frequent peaks and valleys, many ups and downs. Boom. Well, you're on, Leo. It's a, it's a it's almost a trick question because you think of the word persuasive. Okay, what story uh, method is the most persuasive? You would think the straight line. You're here and I want you to go to here and I'm just shooting to kill. I am telling you, this is the way it is. So that's our, our, our head or the maybe the science dentist would have us think it's this. But in fact, I don't believe that to be true. I think when you're telling a story and you're trying to persuade someone, you want them to hear what you're saying. You want them to be part of the story. You want them to visualize it. So the up and down, the the, the setting the stage, the involving them, getting them emotionally invested, having them visualize their own life, their own first grade teacher, their own mailbox, whatever whatever the story is about, is going to hook them. I had an uh, editor once mm -hmm. that told me that that beginning hook, that, that, that start where you have them decide, yes, I, I want to know this, and they're going to go a little bit deeper. And then it does a switch, so oh, they're going to go a little bit different. And then, oh, yep. here's this different, different. That is going to persuade much more than just telling them the story. Well, Miss Leah, we always knew you were about the smartest person in the room, which is always <laughs> true. But what does the science say? Okay. It is somewhat counterintuitive. As you would, as you said first, the straight line, no ups or downs, is probably the go to way that most mm -hmm. people tell stories but it's not the one that's the most persuasive uh -huh. it's the roller coaster just as you uh, illustrated the ups and the downs that is the most persuasive story so when you're crafting a sales story or a story about your business a marketing story use the ups and downs you know maybe your origin story had some downs in it there were some bad times right yep. and all of a sudden things got great Everything was lovely. And then all of a sudden, oh, 2007, 2008 hit. Boom. Down again. How did we recover from that? That's the kind of story that people listen to and are persuaded by. I guess you're and, right and on Dennis, with that one. What, when you think about it, we were talking at the beginning about public speaking and whether you love it or hate yes. it. But the ability to do it confidently. When you are talking to an audience and you are talking to that one person in there and you pick that person and you see them engaged in what it is that you're saying. That builds the confidence because when you are connected yep. to all that energy in a room, I don't care if you're talking to two people or you're talking to 200 or 2,000, those people, if they are listening to you, if you have them coming on this ride with you, there's only you and them individually right. in the story and in the room.
And that is how you become a confident speaker. And that is how you persuade. And that is how you form connections with your listeners. Wow. You just gave a brilliant example of synchronicity, brain Mm. synchronicity. Uh, That is exactly what happens. Let's say the the experiment that I'm thinking of that uh, the Wharton professors have done is about a movie trailer. Okay. And they put groups of people in different theaters and they play different movie trailers for them. Right. And the ones that resonate most are brief, emotional, to the point and short. Okay. They're not long winded trailers. And guess which one uh, they try others that are longer, louder, not as compelling. Guess which one wins? The one that creates brain synchronicity. They put them in an fMRI machine and the brains are synchronized, which means that is the highest level of communication. So you just perfectly described that. I hope our listeners will go back and play that over because she said it as well or better than any scientist ever said it. Thank you. Good on you. Okay. Next topic, turn past into presence. Okay, what does that all mean? Well, a lot of times we use a past tense. Well, this thing was true at some point in the past. The solution worked well. Uh, Something uh, that we found this to be true in the past doesn't work as well as this solution works well, not worked well, or what you find today, not what you found. Isn't that interesting? Present tense suggests action, doing something, some stability, something more enduring than something that used to happen. So put your past, isn't that something? Put the past tense in the past and use action words. I am enjoying our conversations. I'm not hoping to enjoy our conversations. (laughs) I am enjoying them. If I if yeah, I say I'm hoping a, to, that right. leaves you going, oh, is she hoping that that's going to be good? Yeah. Is it uh, what what? Or she did before? She doesn't anymore? No, I am. Yeah, or, we or are I wired, them. but we're wired to think of what is as being what always will be and and where we are, and that is so important because our, that's all yeah. our brain understands. Present when tense. We, you got it. Yep. The now. Okay, so let's wrap this up into a little New Year's gift, put a bow on it. How can you speak with more confidence? Forget the hedge words. Forget about the kind ofs, the maybes, the usuallys, the generallys, etc. Okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, Forget, oh, I forgot one, the verbal tics. Forget the verbal tics. Uh, I, I Have you ever been a member of Toastmasters by any chance? I've taken some classes, but not a member, no. Okay. Well, I've been a member for years, and they have a little ceremony, I guess you can call it, ritual, that whenever yep. you say a, a tick word, they ring a bell right in the middle of your speech. You could be mm-hmm. given the most serious speech you've ever given in your life, and if you say, um, er, filler words, Ding! The bell goes off right in the middle of your speech. Now, you don't stop speaking. It's just to warn you that you said a filler word, okay? How about recorded sales calls? As you know, I listen to hundreds of hours of actual recorded sales calls. I will say this. The person in this particular group that is doing the worst at closing uses the most filler words, verbal tics. And transcripts don't lie. And, you know, and the transcripts that I pull, all the filler words are underlined. You can actually have them removed from the transcript. I leave them in. I want them to see it. Okay. It absolutely takes away from your credibility. Absolutely. There's no question about it. Rather than use a filler word, here's what you should do. Pause. Just pause. When you need to think, if you need to think before you speak, By the way, speakers who pause are viewed more positively. They are thought to be more competent than people who use filler words. So we got to get rid of the 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 ahs. Just think of that bell ringing every time you. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. Ah, (laughs) ding. Okay, so let's close this up. How about the hedge words? Get rid of them. Use definite words. 
When to admit a mistake. When you are perceived as competent, a small mistake once in a while is a good thing. Use emotional words, but emotional words with an uncertain load. Use the best story structure, which is the roller coaster, and get rid of verbal tics and use the present tense. What do you think, Leah? There's seven tips. You can start being more competent and more persuasive today. Absolutely. And you know what? The old, you remember the old joke that you just had to uh, visualize people naked when you're talking to them with a big group to have that confidence? <laughs> then we don't have to do that because that's, that's no. not comfortable for anybody. Uh, let me assure you, that <laughs> never worked for me. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on your audience. <laughs> well, there you go. That, that synchronicity, hey? Synchronicity. So what do you think, Leah? Does this... Does this ring true? Do you think this will help our small business owners, our sales managers, our salespeople? I I really believe it does. It 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 is it all comes back to wizardofads.org, right? Wizardacademy.org, I should say. Yeah. Wizardacademy.org. The the our sponsor small by business. Way. Yeah, well, our sponsor and our our ability to have to direct our listeners to classes there that are very, very specific. The, I mean, I think of the young uh, writers class where they help kids become that much more confident um, in <laughs> what they're talking going about. going nuts with the bell. <laughs> <laughs> I should have never mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna be regretting that. I think my bell sounded a little different than yours. Wow! What did you say that got belled? I don't think I don't you deserve the bell, I, Leah. I, I think we're just gonna power through it. Go ahead. Wizard Academy is, it's a must. If you haven't been there, go to wizardacademy.org. Do yourself a favor. Look at the lineup of 2024 classes. They've got a ton of them already on the books. Pick one that you like, sign up, and go. Sign up early because the early birds get a beautiful accommodation on campus in Austin, mm -hmm. Texas. Yep. right near where the uh, classes are held with food and drink and a wonderful time. So wizardacademy.org. And much like our podcast, it is everything you learn is going to be based on science, but it comes with such yes. a degree of heart that when you go back to your real life, everything's <laughs> going to be better. It will be. We guarantee it. Boom. Okay. That's it for this edition of Connect and convert. We look forward to seeing you the next time. Stay tuned.